Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bible class. Uh, we are studying the Sermon on the Mount, and we are going to look at Matthew 5, 21 and 22 today. You have heard that it, it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. These verses show us that it really does matter the way we talk to other people. Now, Jesus starts these, he starts this, uh, verse 21, with a saying that he's going to use a lot. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. And then in verse 22, but I say unto you. So this is the, this is the, um, let's see, is it the first one? Yeah, it's the first one here in Matthew chapter 5. And he's not talking, he, he doesn't say, this is what you've read. This is what you have heard. And a lot of these things that Jesus mentions that the people may have heard are not, well, they're not, they're not right, not completely. Uh, sometimes, it, like in this case, in Matthew 5, 21 and 22, he's dealing with something that needs expanding. For example, thou shalt not kill is the first thing. And whosoever shall, shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. That's pretty simple. If you kill somebody, you're going to jail or, well, you're danger of the judgment. At this time, you commit murder, you probably were going to be stoned or or executed in some way. Uh, that, that's just, that was just the consequence of murder. Um, and I wonder why, I wonder why Jesus starts off with like the worst crime. Uh, he starts off with, thou shall not kill. Whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Well, everybody agrees that this is a good law. And Jesus isn't, you see, sometimes what he does is he changes what has been said. Like, for example, For example, you have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, resist not evil. Or in, five, uh, in verse 43, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Well, that's not, that's not in Scripture. That's not in the Old Testament. It's certainly not something that is moral to do hating your you know love your neighbor but hate your enemy that's not something that is moral uh, but so Jesus changes sometimes and sometimes what the people were saying was different from what God actually wanted so you've heard that it was it, it has been said love your neighbor but hate your enemy and Jesus says no I don't want you to do any of that I want you to love everybody including your enemy here, though, he starts with something that he's not going to turn around and say no to. What he's going to do is he's going to say, there's more than that. And if you're going to follow God correctly, you have to do more than this. So, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Well, Jesus isn't going to overturn that. He's not going to change that because, well, it's wrong to kill and it's always wrong to commit murder. So you're going to be in danger of the judgment. You'll be in danger of the judgment of the law, but you'll also be in danger of the judgment uh, uh, of the judgment of God. But then he expands on it because I get the impression that he's dealing with people who are of the mindset of, well, at least I don't kill. And they think that they're okay so long as they don't break some of these really big laws. Do you follow God? Well, yeah, I don't kill. The problem is if you use your restraint 
in this situation to justify you. Yeah, I don't, I don't kill. I'm a good person. I don't, I, you know, I've never killed anybody. Does that actually determine? Whether, does that actually make you a good person? The fact that you haven't committed this heinous crime? Well, no. So what Jesus does is he expands on it. He says, you've said, don't kill, because you'll, you'll be judged if you don't kill. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So the same, the same phraseology there. In verse 21, whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Then in 22, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you'll be in danger of the judgment. So there's a difference there between murder and anger, right? Well, he's backing up. He's backing up. If you kill somebody, you're going to be in danger of the judgment. But where does that come from? Where does taking a life come from? Well, he backs it up. He takes the same scenario of somebody winding up in judgment, and he backs it up a little bit. Here's, here's the killing that they've done before they wind up in judgment. But what happens before the killing? Well, something leads to that. Anger with your brother. Our attitude that we have toward people is very important. And we have, to, we have to make sure that we check the way we feel and we control not just the actions that we do, but also the way we feel because killing, that's an action. You, you commit murder. But being angry with somebody, well, that happens in your mind. That happens here. We know that our actions are driven by what happens in our mind. And if I'm going to commit murder, if I'm going to, to kill somebody, well, it has to start here. It starts in my mind. So Jesus wants us to realize this and to be in control of this. What does it mean, angry with your brother without a cause? Shall be in danger of the judgment. Well, is there a valid cause for anger? I believe there is. Jesus was Jesus was angry when he drove out the people from or drove out the money changers. He was righteously angry. And then the scriptures in, in this is an important verse I believe Ephesians 4:26 Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So what that tells me is anger itself isn't the sin, but unchecked anger is. So why might I be angry with somebody? Well, there has to be a reason for it. There has to be a righteous reason, a just cause for it. And I would say that the anger has to match the reason. So I can't just, uh, somebody, if somebody does something small to me, I can't just blow it way out of proportion and ramp my anger up to all the way to 11. That's not being angry with a just cause, that's losing my temper. And when we lose our tempers, we're, well, we're being angry without a without a cause. It's, it's not saying that nothing has caused your anger. It's, it's a legitimate cause is what he's, what he's saying here. Being angry without a cause is without a legitimate cause. And I would say that even if somebody does something wrong, if my level of anger doesn't match that, well, then I'm angry without a cause. I'm angry without a legitimate cause, or the level of my anger is without the right cause. So he says that if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you shall be in danger of the judgment. Uh, and then he says, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, 
shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. I'm not quite sure what the difference between Raka and thou fool is. Raka is a, a Hebrew word. It means it comes from the Aramaic and it means something something like empty. So you're calling somebody an empty an empty person, which is it's an insult against their intelligence. You're calling them a dullard, empty headed is the idea. When you say raka, you're you're calling somebody you're calling somebody empty headed. And this was a derogatory term that you'd say to somebody. You, you didn't say it in love. You said it to somebody when you were angry without a cause or, or something like that. I don't know why calling them a fool might have been looked on as less than that. Moros. Um, I think it's moros where we get our English word moron. Let's see. Yeah, moros. And the lexicon says probably from the base of 3466, dull or stupid, that is heedless, blockheaded, hmm, apparently absurd, or a fool. So it's actually very close to raka. Maybe raka was a, an officially recognized word, uh, but Jesus is telling us, be careful what you say. And if killing somebody puts you in danger of the judgment, but being angry with somebody also puts you in danger of the judgment, what he says next is, whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. You're going to be taken before the, the leaders, the, the council. That's, that's court. So you say Raka to somebody, you're, you're actually, you can be taken before a, tribu a tribunal. You can be judged by these things that you say. However, Jesus says, whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. So what we say really matters to people. The way we speak really matters to people. And, and I love how Jesus takes the judgment. You're going to be taken before the magistrate and you're going to be, you're going to be tried and you're going to be found guilty and just look down a little bit to verse 25 and 26 agree with thine adversary quicker whilst thou art in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge delivered to the officer and thou be cast into prison verily i say unto thee thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost far farthing so uh, judgment and actually going to jail is, is in these, these conversations that Jesus is, ha is having. You call somebody Raka, you could actually go to jail. But also, you call somebody a fool. And once again, I'm not sure if Raka means an empty-headed person. Isn't that what a fool means as well? So I think he's using two terms, Raka and Moros. Raka is a Hebrew or a Hebrew word. Moros is a Greek word, but but they both mean pretty much the same thing. I, if I had to guess, I'd say Raka was more widely viewed as a nasty word. Maybe it was one of those swear words of the day, or you know, it definitely was something that I mean, if you get taken before a tribunal, a council, and judged because of it. That's a pretty nasty word to say to somebody. But Jesus is saying, you say to somebody, thou fool, you're not just in danger of a physical council, you're in danger of hellfire. You're going to be taken before 
the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be judged before Almighty God, and your soul could be in danger by the things that you say. Now, recently, I preached a sermon from the book of Jude. And Jude talks about these false teachers, and one of the one of the, the things that they do is they speak evil of, verse 10 says, these speak evil of those things which they know not. Verse 8, they, these are filthy dreamers. They defile the flesh, it says, despise the dominion, and, and speak evil of dignities. So these wicked people, these false teachers and, and wicked people trying to drive people away from following Christ, they don't control what they speak or how they speak. And that's, that's very important. <clears throat> that's something that we really need to, we need to mind. We need to mind our words. You say to somebody, thou fool, you speak in a degrading way to somebody. Now, is thou fool the only thing that you can't say to somebody? Well, I think that the Bible talks about how we should speak with grace to people. And if we, if we say nasty things to others, well, there's a, a serious problem. Isn't that what James chapter 3 is about? The tongue can no man tame? And he, he mentions here in verse 9, we bless God, even the Father, with the tongue, we bless God, and even the Father, and therewith, with the tongue, we curse men, which are made after the similitude or in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. So how can you go on Sunday and sing praises to God and then on Monday, go and speak so hatefully to somebody else. Jesus says, if you talk hatefully to somebody, and he uses thou fool and raka, but if you speak hatefully to somebody, you're not just going to be in danger of the judgment hauled before some council. No, you are in danger of being taken before a much higher court the tribunal or the, the, the judgment day where Christ will preside and judge the living and the dead. That's going to be that's going to be the greatest court of all. And we don't want to be judged guilty because we don't know how to control the way we speak. So in Matthew chapter five, be careful the way you speak to people because this is danger. And it's not just, well, I didn't kill the person. And this is, this is something that I think Jesus is dealing with here. When we commit sin and when we look at our lives, we tend to compare ourselves with somebody who is worse. So here, one who can't control his tongue and lashes out hate with hatefulness and and bitterness and meanness towards somebody well what might he say well i didn't kill them and well you're still in danger of hellfire even if you didn't kill a person james says if you don't kill but you commit adultery you're still guilty of the law you're guilty in one thing, you're guilty of it all. So just because you don't commit this section of the law, killing and thievery and adultery, but just because you don't commit this, it doesn't mean you're safe if at the same time you're over here breaking these laws. Speak generously and kindly to other people and, and care for other people. Well, if you're neglecting these laws, even while keeping these laws, guess what? not good enough. You got to keep them all, all of the laws that, that Christ gives to us, we have to follow. So not, don't just say, well, I haven't killed anybody today because you know what? You don't get a pat on the back for that. It's, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. You, you can go your whole life without killing somebody and I'm not going to say good job. And God's not going to say, oh, great job. Yes. You did such a good job. Come on into heaven because you never killed somebody. Well, 
if you never killed somebody, but you were mean and nasty and uncaring, you might as well just be a murderer anyway. And there's actually, there's actually a passage which says, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. So this, this hatred that brews in your heart and comes out uh, the way you speak, we need to avoid that. We need to get rid of it, cut it away from our lives. And that's, um, that's all I have for today. Next time we will look beginning at Matthew 5, 23 and 24. We might go all the way to 26, but I think we, I've been doing just two verses per class and I like that. Uh, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something ought against you, stop worshiping and go make it right. There's something that we'll have, we'll have fun talking about. Uh, but in any case, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a blessed day.